so I watched uh, Hamilton this weekend. It came out this weekend on Disney Plus. So I, I got Disney Plus because of Baby Yoda. Uh, so I, I had it. I went yeah. and got it because I wanted to see Baby Yoda. Everyone was talking about Baby Yoda. So I was like, I ain't watching nothing else on Disney Plus until Hamilton. So thank y'all for putting something else on Disney Plus that I could watch. Um, and I, as I'm watching it, I was saying to myself, Drew, I, I saw your post. You actually physically saw it. I couldn't get tickets. Yeah. I'm not the popular kid. Drew, Drew McCaskill has a lot of friends, people like him. I, I couldn't get tickets. It was sold out for like three years and yep. I couldn't get tickets and everyone's talking about it. And I was like, I can't believe I don't know anybody that can get me tickets to Hamilton. I did not. I didn't know you at the time, Drew, because I'm sure you didn't you know me at me the up. time. I did not. I did not know you. I know you would have hooked me up, but I'm watching it now like everyone else. I wonder, though, this play that won so many Tonys, 11 Tony Awards, a Pulitzer Prize, made more than a billion dollars, broke records on Broadway with a cast of people playing folk we know who look different than the folk we know. So you're, you're looking at Alexander Hamilton, played by a man from the Latino Hispanic background, and you're looking at Thomas Jefferson, played by a man of, of I, I want to say he's black. He called himself whatever, Kaplan Asian, I don't know what he called, but he's black, black man. Uh, his wife, uh, his, his paramour, her sister, Two sisters, different race. I mean, but but this is what theater is, right? It is great acting. And I was immediately enthralled. I was caught up. I think one of the first um, numbers by the, the sister, the older sister. I don't know all of the characters. I, I can't remember her name. I think it's Barry, something Barry. She killed it. Uh, Angelica, um, I think. One, Angelica, character? no, the sister of Angelica. I don't know the, the sister. Eliza was, oh, was the Eliza. Wife, and then Angelica was the sister. Oh, Angelica, you're right. You're right, Smith. Angelica. Killed that number. I don't know who the actress is, but she was amazing. And then the piece with um, with my man um, who played Burr. Uh, you got to be in the room. Leslie you Odom. Be in the room. Leslie Odom, Jr. Yeah, you got to be in the room. I loved, I loved it. But I wonder, Drew McCaskill, if they, if 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 Hamilton came out today and we didn't have COVID, would it land the same way with the racial pandemic that we're in? Yeah. You know what? Here's, I have I have traditionally always had a love for this piece of theater, but also in the back of, in just sort of in the back of like my neck, there's just a little bit of Hamilton Thorn, right? Because I I wonder, one I think it was I think it would probably land just as hard today in what we're going through today as it did when we first saw Hamilton come out, maybe what, I think it's now like five years ago. Yeah. But my question is, if an African American had told us the story of a historical figure using hip hop, because this is essentially what it is. The whole Hamilton is, is rap and battle rap all throughout. Every time that there's a, that there's a debate in Congress, that's just battle rapping. That's what they're doing, is two people battle rapping, right? And there are all of these pieces that are taken from, from hip-hop and hip-hop culture. And it makes me wonder, if a Black man had written this and put it on Broadway and had leveraged hip-hop to tell the story of the quote-unquote founding fathers of America, would it have been as well received, right? Because I do believe that Hamilton is a piece of genius. I do oh, believe yes. that. I do believe that. But I also know that sometimes um, how things are delivered and who delivers it to you to the to Americans matters, right? And I wonder could a black man, even with the history of having done, you know, in the heights that, that Lynn Manuel Miranda has. Mm. I wonder to this day that if a black man had put this on Broadway using hip hop, using our our culture and our norms. You already our... know the answer though. You know the answer yeah. to that. The answer is no, yeah. it would not have been received. And then I'm also thinking about who goes to who who's on Broadway. You know. Yeah. We're, we're talking to a national audience. We have people from from Toronto, to California, Atlanta, all over the world, all over Maryland, D.C., you know, Texas, of course, one of our big, big listenerships. 
not everyone gets to go to Broadway. Not everyone yeah. has gone. Not everyone has been to Broadway. My favorite Broadway plays to this day, musicals. The Wiz, because I saw that as a little kid, and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. And I've sat so far up, I could barely see, but I had good eyes then. And I, I just remember hit, hitting Battle and Stephanie Mills, and it, woo, everything. Dream Girls and The Color Purple. Now, I don't know where Hamilton would sit had I, saw, had I sat in that theater and seen it live. You saw it live. The, the numbers, watching it on television, not the same, not the same experience as being in the theater. Yeah. Um, not sure if it lands the same for people watching it as well who've never been to theater, to, the, to, to Broadway. Uh, it was amazing. But I, in, the, in the era where we're taking down and dismantling monuments, statues, and all of that, even the glorification of these people, I mean, we're looking at statues coming down of people who have yeah. been up for hundreds of years in stone, taken down. And we're also seeing things like Frederick Douglass's statue being taken. People vandalized and took that down in Rochester. There's a lot happening in this country right now. I haven't leaned into those statues and monuments and flags because I think that in many ways it's, it's symbolic. I felt that even with the Confederate flag. Yes. We have systemic issues here that we have to deal with. Yeah, I may not like Roosevelt with the, with the enslaved person and the Native American. I may not like that, but... Eh, which is different than maybe the Redskins, which is disrespectful, and you're you're making money off of the denigration of a people. That's something different. You know, there's a yep. lot of different moving parts here. Hamilton was a complicated figure, and they keep saying he was an immigrant, as if being an immigrant in the 1700s is the same as being an immigrant in 2020. It is not. Right. So not. I was I was struggling with that. There were several moments I was like, eh, how does this land today? You know, the other thing that I that I think about when I think about Hamilton, too, is the fact that we, we're looking at this history. The, I feel like one of the reasons why we're seeing the flags come down, why we're seeing these monuments come down, is that there is a, that there is a new way of looking at history. We have looked at history and been taught history in this very sanitized um you know, quick serve kind of way. And you've got things like 1619 happening where people are now having, are having to be forced to view history in a different way. One of the things that I do absolutely love about Hamilton, that we are having a reckoning with what we know about American history right now. You look at 1619, you look at now new scholars talking about and giving us a different vantage point of history. I think that that, complicated figure that we now see in Hamilton, as well as the people who orbit around him that are touched on in bits and pieces in a little ways, I, that's the reason why I think it would still hit today is because we have a renewed, a renewed appreciation for the fact that we've been taught a bunch of bullshit when it comes to history, right? Exactly. And so now getting a deeper dive into that, I think it's really appealing to people. That's why the flags are coming down. That's why the monuments are coming down. Like people are actually now thinking about history in a different way. We're thinking about the national anthem in a different way. We're thinking about the Confederate flag in a different way. And there are more voices who are actually have the ability to comment and sort of correct some of these misnomers that we have, that we've been talking about in history. It's, Interesting to see how this is all going to play out when it's all said and done and how history is going to look at this period of time with all of the deconstruction or destruction of monuments. And we got people in the streets trying to paint over Black Lives Matter uh, Plaza. I mean, it's just it's a lot happening here because it's about identity for a lot of people. Right. It's about identity. 